All right, welcome to Urgent Word. We're going to dive into the book of Galatians. We're going to take a look at someone else's mail. That's exactly what we're doing when we're reading the New Testament epistles. You're going through someone else's mail, which again, I believe that's a federal offense. Don't do it with current mail, but this mail, it's safe. So are you ready? We're going to start asking some key questions based on just the first couple of verses. Let's dive in. Galatians 1, we start with the person sending, and then we talk about the person who is receiving. All right, that's how this New Testament letter format works, the epistle. Here we go. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brothers and sisters with me to the churches in Galatia. All right, right there we have who's writing and to whom. That's a key part if you're trying to intercept someone else's mail to understand who's writing to whom. Right here, Paul is grounding the truth of his claims of having good news and the reality of the physical resurrection of Jesus. Jesus came back from the dead. This is a historical fact that Paul and these churches are founded on. So let the weight of that, the nearness of this to that event, take shape in our faith, that our faith is grounded in Jesus Christ beating the grave. The resurrection is real, and so these words matter. So who is this Paul figure? You may have heard about him before. You see, he's an apostle. He's kind of this interesting last apostle, final apostle. You have the people that followed Jesus during the days of his ministry, these 12 leaders, one of them betrayed Jesus, Judas, replaced by this guy named Matthias. Uh, so there were this core of, group of people who followed Jesus and knew him in his earthly life. But Paul had a special experience with Jesus as he encountered the resurrected Jesus on the road to Damascus. We're going to hear more about Paul's own autobiography throughout this letter as he kind of tells some of his story of how he came to faith and uh, in Christ and how he came to, to be a champion of the good news. And he's a missionary. He planted churches all over the Mediterranean, all over the ancient Roman world. So, that's what we see here. So many of these letters that are written to different churches in different regions throughout the Roman Empire. Which brings us to our next exploration. What is Galatia? Where on a map is this? Well, let's dive into some of the history. Galatia is actually this really intriguing former Celtic kingdom. Yeah, Celts from uh, from Gaul, from uh, uh, Normandy area, uh, you're talking about the western part of Europe. Uh, during the 5th century BC, they came over and, and actually had some invasions further east into what is modern day Turkey. And so at one point, this was actually a, a Celtic kingdom, but later came under the persuasion of the Roman Empire. And so the name Galatia kind of represents this r province of Roman rule that included this former Celtic kingdom. And what became, uh, as the Zondervan Pictorial Dictionary of the Bible puts it, is the evolution of Galatia into the multiracial Roman province. So by the time Paul is interacting with this region and these peoples that are here, it's a multi-ethnic group. And that's a theme we're going to see play out in the book of Galatians as we look through Paul's urgent word to the churches in this region. Race will be part of the conversation. So who are these churches? Well, Paul's missionary journeys took him through the province of Galatia. There's some really intriguing stories there if you tarry over Acts 13 and 14. There's some very fascinating encounters in cities that are actually in this province, Iconium being one of them, Derby, and this place called Antioch in Pisidia. Some really interesting encounters when, when these these guys came and they started preaching the good news. The cities uh, had a mixed response. And sometimes both the Jews and the Gentiles thought, you know what? This, is, this isn't the good news. Uh, we're going to stone you now. So Paul had to put up with some tough time. There was some, some persecution in these areas as he spread the good news. But the very fact that he's writing to churches in Galatia, 
in this province mean that the good news took root. People received the good news of Jesus and churches were planted and people were joining this movement of God's salvific aims uh, promised uh, all the way from the fall to now they were starting uh, to, to, to come to a realization that this good news about Jesus was indeed something to stake their lives and their identity in and the church grew. So Paul is writing to a collection of churches Churches probably met in homes. They met near synagogues at some point. But there's a whole network of churches that Paul is writing to address in the region of Galatia. And here we just want to preview that all of the New Testament letters are occasional. That means that there was a reason that they wrote. Writing a letter and sending it in the ancient world wasn't as easy as sending a text message today or an email or even a paper letter today. It was actually a costly project. So the words that we have, the communication between the early church and this network of writing and sending, they didn't just write for uh, small reasons. There was a, an, an occasion, an urgent matter that needed to be dealt with. A word of encouragement, a word of warning, a word of um, collaborative action. And here we see, uh, and this is what we're gonna wrestle with in this letter, that the occasion is actually that people have come to change the good news about Jesus. There's a group of people we're going to meet in this letter who are changing the gospel, the good news about Jesus, to meet their needs. Now, we've talked about a lot of key words here. We've talked about the gospel, the good news, the salvific intent of God. We've talked about the idea of an occasion of something happening in the situation in the church. We've talked about the geography and the history of, of this region and Paul's relationship to these churches and his missionary journeys. There's a lot going on here. So I just wanted to get an introductory lay of the land as we wade into this book. What I want you to do is to read through this letter. One of the things I find most helpful about reading the Bible is when we, especially in a letter, read the whole thing. We wouldn't stop reading a letter from a friend in the middle of it and say, let me save um, the next part for the next day, or let me read verse by verse. Those are all important, and we're going to do that with this letter as well. But for now, I want you this week, if you'd commit to reading through the book of Galatians every day for a week see what you notice. So read through the book of Galatians every day for a week. It'll take you about 20 minutes each reading or even quicker. And what is the thrust of Paul's argument? What is he trying to say? What is he writing to address? And these things are going to start to stand out to you as you hear the tone, the big picture of his message, and why it's so important. He's writing to address this changing of the good news about Jesus. And some bigger picture things to think about as we slide into this ancient literature and these, these uh, intercepting other people's mail. What is the good news of Jesus? Why did Paul endure such persecution to plant churches? Why is this movement that we see the early church uh, clinging to, to this faith and and this new identity in Christ, why is this so important? Why is it uh, that they would, they would uh, give up their lives to do this? We hope you begin to see the vast importance of what's being said here, the truth claims that not just reach the people in Galatia, this former Celtic kingdom, this Roman province, this multiracial Roman hub of activity and cities. It's not just important to them. That the words that are being put on, on papyrus and sent so long ago by the hand of this man named Paul are in fact inspired by God to touch you, to give you direction, to give you insight about who God is, to help you understand your own identity in Christ Jesus. So as a contemplative activity, I'd like to invite you to journal about this as we've asked these questions about who Paul is, where is he, what is the church he's in or addressing, and what is the urgent situation as we're asking these questions, why don't we attempt to do the same for ourselves? So here's a journaling prompt. You can take this to God in prayer.
some of these explorations and this letter to, to churches in Galatia start to help us understand the big picture story that we are a part of in our own context. God's be